Hello, my name is Jared Brenner. And I'm Alana Siegel. And we welcome you to our week two analysis of poetry for Mr. Henry's class in AP Literature. Today we will be um, analyzing and annotating A Barred Owl by Richard Wilbur. So I hope you enjoy things and, and learn a lot. Before we get into the analysis and annotations and translating, etc., of this poem, uh, what, what is very useful and helpful is to just listen to the poem once, read it over without any intentions of analyzing it, just to sort of so soak it in and just like get one good read in. So listen up. The warping night air, having brought the boom. Of an owl's voice into her darkened room. We tell the weakened child that all she heard was an odd question from a forest bird. Asking of us if rightly listened to. Who cooks for you? And then, who cooks for you? Words which can make our terrors bravely clear. can also thus domesticate a fear and send a small child back to sleep at night not listening for the sound of stealthy flight or dreaming of some small thing in a claw born up to some dark branch and eaten raw now we're going to analyze our poem using TipFast and a couple of extra things. The title is A Barred Owl. A barred owl is a species of owl with bands of color on its chest. Okay, so for the next part, um, paraphrase. Uh, we paraphrase the poem as a, um, an owl comes into the child's room and leaves. Uh, when the child wakes up, uh, we the point of view say it was just a forest bird asking a silly question and it's very innocent having reassured the child that she is safe uh, she now goes back to sleep without fear uh, she's no longer like going to be up at night thinking about it or having nightmares about this uh, scary bird next we're going to analyze the figurative devices used in the poem the first one is rhyming um, it's possible that the author uh, makes the poem rhyme to keep the reader interested. It kind of uh, keeps a steady pace so that the reader can follow along. Um, the next thing we notice is the pronouns that um, the author uses. When he is referring <coughs> to the child, he uses pronouns like she, her, or small child, which kind of um, helps emphasize the innocence of her when you think of like a little girl um, like sleeping at night. Um, he also uses we to describe whoever is like preventing the child from fear or the, possibly the child's parents. Um, the next thing we notice is a double entendre in the title. A barred owl can, has two meanings. The first is the literal meaning of the owl with bands of stripe on its, bands of color on its chest. Um, the second meaning to bar as a verb means to prevent or forbid, forbid something. So in the poem, the, chi the child's parents or whoever's watching after her are preventing her fear by um, talking to her about her, um, her dream that she experienced with the owl, helping her be less scared of it. Um, another thing that we notice is um, a juxtaposition in the last line of both of the stanzas. In the last line of the first stanza, we notice the word cooks. And in the last line of the second stanza, we notice um, the words eaten raw. This contrast helps us see the opposite views of nature and how like the words used can shape our like opinions of what happened. The last thing we notice is the diction that the author uses. Um, Wilbur off often uses words that describe nature. 
um, such as um, food or forest bird, owl. Um, the word choice helps us think about nature or more instinctually about human life. Uh, next, we have the attitude slash tone. Um, in the first stanza of the poem, uh, the Richard Wilbur's tone is innocent, warm, and whimsical. Uh, with uh, We tell the awakened child that all she heard was an odd question from a forest bird. Um, and the questions and such, it's all just very light-hearted. And then once it moves on to the second stanza, uh, uh, it becomes more realistic and harsh, um, speaking about fear and domestication and um, using the words stealthy, uh, claw, eaten raw. You know, it's very harsh and realistic. And then that, that change from uh, stanza one to stanza two brings us to our ne next topic, shifts. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, first of all, it shifts from line two to line three from a very dramatic uh, tone to a more less dramatic, more innocent tone from a warping night um, to like we telling us telling the awakened child that all she heard was an odd question from a forest bird. It's a big change there. Um, and then next, what I mentioned before, um, going from the first stanza to the second stanza, it, be, it goes, except uh, my explanation now is how it goes from an innocent story <clears throat> about like the owl coming in and leaving and, and us reassuring the child that, that it was just an innocent bird asking a silly question. It goes from that innocent story to the actual justification of the story and the lesson behind it about uh, diction and words. And then finally, um, when it goes from line eight to line nine, it goes back to the story that it was in the first stanza, except this time it's talking about the aftermath of the story, like after the, um, the situation with Al happened. Um, it's talking about like the effect it had on the, the child with the diction. Looking back at the title, um, we noticed that um, barred owl has two meanings, um, which we talked about earlier, one of which being the literal owl, and the second which, second of which being to prevent or forbid. Um, in the poem, the parents are trying to prevent their child from developing, they're trying to prevent their child from developing any fear she might have from the, the owl or the dream that she had, and they do this through the use of their words um, by, you know, saying it was an odd question from a forest bird. It wasn't really anything to worry about or anything that you should be scared of. Which leads us into our theme that the conscious decision of what diction you use can have a critical effect on the meaning behind what you say. The speaker. Um, which we have mentioned before, is um, the parents or whoever is preventing the child's fear. They're trying to eliminate her fear um, through the use of their words that are chosen very specifically. The speaker is not necessarily Wilbur. Finally, the purpose slash meaning. Um, for us, the, we discovered that the purpose and meaning was to show the importance of diction and how it affects connotation and meaning, um, especially with uh, the first line of the first and second line of the second stanza. Words which can make our terrors bravely clear can also thus domesticate a fear. Um, that's really showing the purpose and meaning of the importance of diction, in a nutshell. All right, thanks for watching. This was uh, week two poem analysis, uh, A Barred Owl by Jared Brenner and Alana Siegel. I hope you learned a lot, and we hope you enjoyed. <laughs>